Welcome to State of Tech, my name's Jared and I'm on the hoverboard or two-wheel self-balancing scooter, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're going to talk about dismounting. How do you get off of this thing? Once you've climbed onto it and you've managed to kind of gain your balance and you know all that good stuff, which we have a couple of videos on. I have a video that shows you a couple of different ways to mount, the, mount this scooter without hurting yourself. And then one on how to practice maneuvering it. So this video is about properly dismounting this thing without hurting yourself. Um, if you've ever ridden a skateboard before, you know that one of the things that typically happens if you don't get your feet out of the way when you're trying to get off of a skateboard is that you fall. The skateboard stays underneath your feet, it has wheels, and it propels itself out from under you and you end up on your back, which hurts. And this device is no different. If you don't get your feet out from under it, you're gonna end up hurting yourself. And so I've kind of done what I did when I used to skateboard as a kid, which is just kind of kick my feet out in whatever direction I'm going. So if I'm in a tight quarters where I don't have a lot of room to get off of this thing, I'll jump behind it. If I have a little bit more room, I might jump with my feet out uh, so that my feet completely clear it. But what I do not recommend is jumping in front of it, which is what is natural, I think, for a lot of people because we typically walk forward. You think, I'll step off of it. That's the wrong thing to do. If you're even slightly moving and you step off of this, your other foot's gonna be right on top of it or it's gonna run into the back of your ankle and then you're gonna end up falling. And I've had that happen before. It's very easy to fall and hurt yourself on this device. So if you don't have something to brace yourself with, which having a ladder, not a ladder, but a table or something that you can use to brace yourself with uh, really helps because you could just kind of pop right off of it like that. And that was very safe. The device disables itself right away and you don't have to worry about it you know, moving anymore. So let's get back on. Um, another thing, if I don't have a lot of room, perhaps maybe I'm, I'm up in front of a table or something like that, I will just kind of jump off and use the table or chair or whatever it is to brace myself. So let's get back on the device. Um, another way that I, I will typically get off of it is just to kind of jump to the side. Notice that I almost didn't clear it. And that's a, uh, something that you risk jumping one foot forward. If I was to have jumped forward with both feet, I probably would have ended up on my back. Uh, it's just the nature of something with wheels that um, wants to propel itself forward. So that's why I feel that jumping off of the back of it is the best way to get off of this device. Even if you're rolling and you have to dismount, you could jump behind it and you're safe. It wants to lean forward because of inertia and as long as you jump behind it, you're not gonna end up hurting yourself. So all in all, that's probably the best way to get off of this device is to jump behind it or kick your legs out completely so that it clears this, uh, this little scooter and you don't end up stepping on it. One of the points, the weakest points of this thing is the center. When we broke the first one, it's because a foot came down right in the middle of it. When you jump off, you wanna regain your footing. So you push your feet down so that you don't fall. And if you do that right in the middle, which is the weakest point of this thing, you're gonna snap it in half and then you're not gonna have a very nice scooter anymore. Um, you won't be able to use it. They're almost impossible to fix because of the cheap metal that they're made out of. Um, this particular model we ordered from Amazon simply because Amazon has a good return policy uh, and as long as you order it Amazon Prime, you aren't gonna have a problem returning it and getting a refund if you break it within the first 30 days. So what I recommend is using the link below in this video if you're looking to purchase one of these. Purchase it from Amazon. We're providing the link below, which is the link that we use to buy. We're not selling these things. This is just the link to the seller that we bought from. Particularly good device, hasn't had any problems with it, and we've had it for about a month now. So definitely check out our other videos if you want a little bit more information on how to ride this, how to learn how to use it, and even an in-depth review of the device on the State of Tech YouTube channel. And subscribe if you're into tech and you like some of the stuff that we do. We'd love to have you around to watch more of our videos that we produce in the future. So thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thanks.